Welcome to the Scarlet and Rage. I am your host, Jay, a.k.a. Rage, along with Michael, my co-host, also known as Scarlet. Um, You know, before I get started here, um, it's a really loaded episode, so get ready, buckle in. Um, Please like and subscribe to this podcast and hit the notification bell so you never miss anything regarding our podcast. That is starting to blow up, by the way. Hey, Jay, Um, before, before you get going, just let me say thank you, all of you that have have subscribed. I appreciate it so much. And uh, let's build a college football community. Uh, Sure, there's going to be a lot of Michigan and Big Ten, but uh, everybody, you're welcome. I think we're open-minded. We're fair. Uh, We certainly were Ohio State fans, but uh, there's room for everybody. So thank you guys for subscribing. And I think we got a great uh, college football episode for you today. Jay? All right. Well, um, let's just address the elephant in the in, in the room here. Um, what an absolute fucking disgrace for Florida State, an undefeated Power Five team that has a very good college football history, left out over a one-loss Alabama team, an Alabama team that lost at home by ten points to Texas. And don't give me that fucking bullshit that Alabama was playing better football right now. This is the same Alabama team that it took a miracle Hail Mary to beat Auburn. That Alabama team. Um, It's just disgusting and sick. I live in ACC country and let me tell you guys, I feel your pain. This is terrible. Jim Phillips really sucks. I used to want him in the Big Ten, but no fucking thanks. Come to the Big Ten, Florida State. Come to the Big Ten. You'll at least make some money and be in a conference that cares more about football, even though we are not successful at football at all. We, but I we do think we you, care. We welcome you with open arms, Florida State. This is the time to align against uh, the evil empire known as the SEC and their benefactors, Disney, SEC, or Disney ESPN Networks. Uh, come, Florida State. Join us. Yeah, man. Um, it, it, it's really disgusting. Um, do not try and tell me that Florida State would play Brock Glenn in the fucking bowl game, by the way, because that seems to be like an argument the committee had out there. I don't know how they were trying to say they weren't the same team, this, that, and the other. Tate Rodemaker was going to be healthy for their bowl game. A Tate Rodemaker that went into Florida and won. And which is also a Florida team that had just damn near beat Missouri on the road. Mm -hmm. Now, Florida State, you do have a great matchup in the Orange Bowl. I hope you win, but, you know, against Georgia. But that's, you know, that's an uphill battle for you. Let's be real. You guys are going to be down on your luck, pissed off, you know, all of that stuff. Do I believe that Alabama is a better team than Florida State on a neutral field? I do, but it's very close. This, re- you know, this really brings into the into the discussion of why even play the fucking games? Florida <laughs> State went undefeated and got left out, so it's like, what the fuck is the regular season even worth more? What, like, what's the fucking point? Like Alabama lost. Jay, th- this is. I, I think there's a bigger uh, thing at play here, and that is the complex of power that the SEC has been able to amass and align through a partnership with ESPN. And the Big Ten decided to throw a rift in that partnership years ago when it wouldn't play ball and it wanted to retain ownership of the uh, Big Ten network. And I don't think that there is any coincidence that from that time forward, the SEC has dominated college football. I'm not saying that they don't have a lot of great teams. I'm not saying that there's not some advantages in that region with players. I'm just saying their run of historical dominance started right alongside their partnership with ESPN and the Big Ten's refusal to be a part of that partnership. And uh, they have amassed more and more power. And I knew from day from from the beginning. So I mean, I am with you in the outrage as far as the affront to college football that this was. And um, Booger McFarlane is the only one on ESPN that had the guts to say so. But I'm not upset about it because I fully expected it. I've been telling people, texting people all weekend. I have two very uh, I have two good friends that are Alabama friends that I, I speak with on a 
somewhat regular basis, I told them, there's zero chance you're getting left out. None. It's never going to happen. Um, and the committee proved me right. So it's not that I don't share your outrage. It's just that I've known, like without a shadow of a doubt, this was going to be the outcome. I knew an SEC team would never get left out of this four-team playoff. Isn't the ACC aligned with ESPN too, though? But like, I swear, they, the ACC network is aligned with like ESPN and all that. It is, but it, but the ACC wants out of that. They're, they're actively fighting ESPN. They want out of that contract because their teams want to be free to join whoever they want to join, the Big Ten. Some of their teams will inevitably probably end up in the Big Ten at some point. Some of their teams will inevitably end up in the SEC. But the ACC is somewhat at odds with ESPN right now because the ESPN contract through 2035 is the only thing that's holding – uh, the ACC together. If it wasn't for that, they would already be broken apart and being sucked up by the Big Ten, the SEC, and right. maybe even the Big 12. Okay. Well, you know, Florida State was 2-0 and against the SEC this season. Yeah, I know. They beat LSU worse than Alabama did on a neutral field versus what Alabama did at home. Mm. They won on the road against Florida, and Florida is like, they're not a bad team at all. They have some talent on that team, and it was a rivalry. I they, understand Florida self-destructed at the end, but Florida State won. They, they are a talented team. They're not a good team, but they. I think by the 247 talent composite, they are in the top 10 talent-wise in the country. University They're up there. They're absolutely yeah. up there. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Damn, I'm so fucking pissed you know, off here, at this, here, here's, here's, the way, this. here's the way I think about it, Jay. Um that Louisville team is, I mean, you know, Louisville's not a team that like, I'm going to go, oh my gosh, it's Louisville. But that is a good football team. Um, it, you know, they beat Notre Dame this year. Uh, they're not a great football team. They are a good football team. And uh, they do have a good offense. You remember how many points they put on Notre Dame? And Notre Dame has a legit defense. You know, I think Notre Dame sucks. But Notre Dame does have a legit defense. And Louisville put what, you know, 28, 31 points, 34 points, something like that on, on, on Notre Dame. And so they're a good offensive football team. And Florida State held them to six points. And with a third-string quarterback, they found a way to get it done. And then, obviously, after this game, they're still going to be at a disadvantage with a second-string quarterback. But they're not going to be at the same disadvantage that they were just in when they played Louisville, a pretty good football team, and found a way to win. So, I mean, if I am a Florida State fan right now, uh, it, well, let's just exchange Florida State for Ohio State because this is something that could have happened to Ohio State seven, eight years ago, when the, you know, 10 years ago, maybe 12 years ago, when the Big Ten was thought of really poorly. Um, and, and if this is something that would have happened, I would have been livid. So I know that Florida State fans have to absolutely be uh, beside themselves with what transpired. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't. I, honestly, there are no words for this, man. I, 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 what can you say? I mean, like, can you imagine if this happened to Ohio State? I, I mean, I would be, I would be livid. I mean, possibly. I mean, like, there'd be fucking riots, and I, and, and I'm not even going to say like you'd be wrong. And do you know what? People are using us as an example of why the talking head pundits are using us as an example of why Florida State did not get in. And what they're saying, Jay, is they're saying, well, you know, this wasn't a Cardell Jones situation where the third string quarterback came in and lit up a top 10 football team 59 to nothing. Uh, this was an ugly, you know, 16 to 6 win against, uh, you know, 15th. Uh, 15th to 17th type team in the country. And, you know, it, it just wasn't that statement that Ohio State made with Cardell Jones. Yes, I, I get that. That's a legitimate point. But again, this guy's not going to be the quarterback in the semifinal game. <laughs> so if you're going to take all of the injuries into consideration, I've never heard of taking injuries into consideration for the playoffs. It's like if, if, if um, L Lamar Jackson, 
you know, he got hurt towards the end of the year last year and they still made the playoffs. I mean, can you imagine in the NFL if the NFL would would have preemptively stepped in and said, uh, Baltimore, uh, you guys lost Lamar, so you don't get to go play the Bengals in the playoffs. We think the Steelers need to go take your place because they're a little healthier, better team at this point in the season, even though during the regular season, you earned a spot to play the Bengals in the first round of the playoffs. I mean, can you? That, that's what happens in college football. That's the way they operate, and it's, it's, it's gotten gross. Well, they do this in the NCAA tournament too, though, when they do seedings for a college basketball, they do take like injuries and, you know, players being out and coming back and they kind of look at the team as a whole and what they're going to be in the tournament. But it goes more unnoticed because 68 teams make the NCAA tournament. So right. there isn't as much complaining there. Right. Um, you know. But you know, with with football, you know, we, we we're not like basketball to where there's 64 teams, and and we're not like uh, where there's all of these disparate conferences that are going to be bringing teams to the table. I mean, in football, it is basically with this year with the with the uh, dissolution of the Pac-12, it is turning into for the time being. You've got the Big Ten, you've got the Big 12, you've got the SEC, and you've got the ACC, and that's it. You know, so. Everybody is coming out of those four what are supposed to be major conferences. Obviously, the Big 12 is going to be by far the weakest out of those four. So I don't know. Maybe you come up with some way to account for that. But there needs to be some type of measurable formula as to how you become a top seed and to how you you know potentially get in the playoffs. And it shouldn't be that hard for smart people to come up with that. Like, I'll give you one that I would – you know, that I would petition to be part of the formula. If you play an FBS team, a division one double a team at any point, you get negative points towards the playoffs. If you play an FBS team at any point in the season, you get negative points towards the playoffs. Uh, you know, that's, you know, and, and positively for every power five, win, you could get X amount of points for every power five, top 25, win, you could get additional points for every power five top 10 win there could be additional points added but you know it's not perfect but it's some type of definable data and criteria uh, as opposed to 13 people in a room sitting around making a decision i mean it's it's absolutely crazy this year has exposed the fraud that it's always been this 14 playoff uh it's it's been better than the bcs i guess in a lot of ways but it, it's very very flawed and it, it can't get gone fast enough will there still be shenanigans in the 12 team playoff yes there will be but you know, 99% of the time, probably the true national champion is going to win in the 12 team format. And in the 14 format, there's still just a lot of room for them to monkey around. You know, that it's ironic that the head chair of the committee is and the NC state athletic director, an ACC guy. Mm -hmm. And Florida State still didn't get in. Now, I think it goes to a vote. I think, like, how many? Like, 13 of them, and I think it goes to a vote. So, you know, obviously having an odd number, so it's not like, here's, you know. Here's my question, Jay. Was the ACC guy, was he, like, were, like, veins popping out of his neck making his case? Or was he just kind of like, yeah, you know, the SEC's, they're, they're, they deserve it. The SEC has to get in. Tell okay, about Jim we, Phillips? Yeah. I mean, how do you think he approached it? Well, I can tell you this. I know Florida State fans fucking hate him because he really didn't have their back. He should have been like, you know, outside of Grapevine, Texas, Texas, like along with the Florida State Athletic Director holding up signs or something like doing something to get their attention. Been on, you know, national TV, this, that and the other. But he just never came and had Florida State's back at any point. It, I think it's possibly because Florida State is openly saying like they want to leave the ACC. And they said it a couple months ago. We are looking yeah. for a way out of here. And I think he's holding it against them. He I him think they to, are. He hung him out to dry. He, he, he hung him out to dry. He did not fight for him and the marketing machine that is the SEC. And let's face it. Hey, they are a marketing machine. Two things can be true at the same time. They are in some degree a product of ESPN marketing. Okay. And 
they are also a very good football conference that you can't deny that they have dominated the national championship landscape over the last, uh, you know, 18, 19 years. You can't deny that. Uh, but two things can be true. They are also a product of ESPN's marketing, constant, incessant marketing. And um, uh, Florida State didn't have a chance. It's, it's like when uh, a political candidate or a political party has a political machine that just crushes weaker uh, opponents. That's how this was. The Bama machine crushed Florida State, and it had no chance. It had no prayer. And it had nothing. It had nothing to do with what took place necessarily on the field. I don't know, man. I was watching like the early morning college football like play playoff preview show on ESPN, and the four guys that were on there. I can't name all of their names. Three of the four picked Florida State to make it in over Alabama. That was their prediction, and that's what they wanted. Dan Mullen, a former SEC guy, was pounding the table for Florida State. So. Oh man! I, I, again, Florida State. We feel terrible for you, man. This this is a crime against. But Jay, nature. on the on the actual show, what was the messaging? You had Booger McFarland, the one dissenter. You had you had McElroy, uh, you know, Alabama boy. He was a hundred percent carrying Alabama's water. Alabama has to be in. You could never leave the SEC championship out. Former Buckeye Joey Galloway was carrying water for Alabama said that there was no way you could leave him out. The guy down on the end of the table, can't you, the, like the, the, the non-football player, he was, you know, not as saying a whole lot, but he, he was, and then you had McFarland. So, I mean, on their, on their main show that everybody's watching, three out of the four guys were just like, oh, yeah, Alabama has to be in. Like, there's no question. Like, this isn't even debatable. You cannot leave Alabama out. And a lot of people buy that. But uh, you could leave Alabama out. I'm not saying that they don't deserve from a talent perspective to be in. I'm just saying by the way that this playoff is designed, as flawed as it is, you absolutely could leave them out and it would be justified. Yeah, man. It's just it's, – it doesn't make sense to me. Um, and uh, it's outrageous. It's disgusting, despicable. Um, yeah, um, feel terrible for Florida state. And, you know, again, you made mention of this earlier, a not, not enough credit is going to their defense because mm -hmm. you watch their defense and that was a weakness for them early on in the season. But I watched them against Louisville and man, they have some explosive disruptors in the front the, seven the, the especially got, jared verse the kid yeah as the kid they got out of pennsylvania i envy that guy like i i wish ohio state had that guy man that's the kind of guys i want on the edge like jt tumalo out good player uh, i'm not i'm not bashing him he's a good player uh jack saw your good player but you want to have one of those types of guys on one side and then you want to have one of the speed guys on the other side. You don't want to have two of those types of, of defense events that are just kind of like run stuffers. Um, and so, yeah, so I, I really wish we had a guy like that. In fact, yeah, we well, they there. had him and they had Braden Fisk, who had three wow. sacks. I'm like, who the hell is this guy? He's mm -hmm. like more of a defensive tackle. I looked him up. You know, he's 6'5", 297. Where is he from? Indiana. Jared wow. Verse is from Pennsylvania. Wow. Yeah. Where, why aren't the Big Ten getting these guys? But let me, but let, me t let me tell you something. That cannot uh, – Big Ten fans, listen up. That cannot happen. Mm -mm. You cannot lose stud defensive linemen to southern teams out of the Midwest. That cannot happen because there's only so many stud defensive linemen in the Midwest – and there's more of those guys in the South, and you cannot lose those stud D linemen out of the Midwest to teams in the South, although we've done it continually this year. We've lost Lightfoot to Miami. We've lost Scott to Miami. We've lost uh, – um, he's not necessarily a Midwest guy, but Stewart to South Carolina. So, uh, yeah. But anyhow, that's amazing that Florida State's got two – a, a, a talent-rich state as much as Florida, where you think of these big defensive linemen, and they've got two stud D linemen that are both from the Midwest. 
Well, along those lines. Michigan fans, you know we all love you. And, you know, you came over here the last week, you know, praising us because we call it like it is, and we, we will continue to do so. Some of but, them are talking smack, but that's okay. I don't I mean, care. You know, it's all good. They, they got the right to. They've won three in a row. Yeah. But you guys are in trouble now. Alabama presents some problems to you that obviously nobody in the Big Ten could. Alabama is fast, long, and they are big on defense. Uh, their offense is also sneaky good, and Jalen Milrow throws much better than you think, especially when the coverage is going to be softer, considering you're going to need spies on him. You could have been playing Florida State, and that wouldn't have been much easier, like I said, but very winnable. I don't know how winnable this game is, though, and it's going to give the black eye that is the Big Ten a much bigger bruise if you go and freaking lay another fucking game. Well, I'm telling like you, you guys have been in your I'm last four games. You, Jimmy and Ann Arbor was not happy when they unveiled that Alabama in that number four seed. I don't care what they say. They know that moving to number one – was a major deficit to them because while they're two good football teams, Michigan and rightly so would much rather play Texas or Washington than they'd rather play Bama. Uh, <laughs> no, for sure. You know, and I thought there was an avenue there for Washington to jump Michigan. I was actually yeah. predicting Washington to jump Michigan because they beat Oregon again. And, yeah. you know, they played in the Pac-10, which was, in my opinion, the strongest conference in America. They went undefeated. They they deserve to be number one, in my opinion. They um, do. Michigan. They, they should have been number one. Be, yeah, I thought Michigan was going to be number two and play Texas. And, you know, in the Sugar Bowl and Washington would have had like kind of a pseudo home field advantage over Florida State or in this case, Alabama. But it did not happen. Um, you know, we'll speak more about the Michigan and the playoff games as time goes on. We absolutely will. We have plenty of time to do that. Um, but as angry as I am about Alabama getting in, let me remind everyone on this podcast that I am the only person out there who picked <laughs> Alabama as like my number one pit team back in like mid October. I picked them to win the West and go beat Georgia. Go look at the episodes back then. I know we didn't have, we were like starting a new and we have no idea what the fuck we're doing. We still don't know what the fuck we're doing when it comes to this podcast. We're learning though, and it's going to get better. Trust me. But go look at the last episodes. It doesn't make me happy about what happened, but I did pick Alabama to win the West. Not They weren't going to lose another game. I said it. I was like, the only game I see them possibly losing is at Texas, A at Texas A&M. It didn't happen, but then it turned out they should have lost to Auburn. That didn't happen either. But, yeah, I don't I, I don't know what else to say there, Michael. I called that one. Well, I mean, you know, uh, not to, I guess, toot our own horn, but I guess we are tooting our own horn. Um, you know, we also, right. You know, I also predicted that Ohio state would go 11 and one. I said, they're going to lose a game. <laughs> and, um, and then both of us were saying, uh, you know, this is probably not a top five team in the country, like based on what we see them doing on the field and based on what we're seeing out of other teams across the country, we don't think Ohio state is probably a top five team in the country. You said you definitely didn't think they were a top five team. I said, I, I was about to actually get to that. I, I said, I probably didn't think that they were a top five team and they absolutely are not. They, they are at best the eighth team uh, in the country. And, and so uh, number eight versus number nine, uh, Missouri with them having probably some guys out, that's going to be, that's going to be a good matchup. And it's a fair matchup because that's where this football team is. It's down there around eight or nine. Yeah, so um, segueing into that uh, regarding Ohio State, you know, you and I, yeah, just to agree, we have said on this podcast and this podcast alone, because I have tried to listen to other Ohio State podcasts out there, and no one ever once said that Ohio State wasn't a top five team. Who was the pe who were the people that said that Ohio State was not a top five team? Uh, I heard this podcast fucking I, did. I, I this heard podcast, uh, this <laughs> podcast fucking said Ohio State was not in the top five, not at any time. 
I heard one today saying, still saying that they were a top four team. That you know, you put them in the playoffs. Stupid fucking you, you, homers, you, you, what they are, and they're you feeding them, you bullshit, and on. they're manipulating this, this, all of you. This is what I heard. You put them in the playoffs, and they could beat any one of those four teams. That's what the guy said. That's verbatim what he said. They would play with anyone, but they wouldn't beat anyone. That's the I don't think they would Ryan be, Day. Well, we know they haven't beat Michigan, and I don't really think they would beat any of the other three teams either. No. I mean, no, they, they might have they might have a chance to go one and three, but that would be at best. They're not going to win two games against teams like that. No way. You know, yeah, well, what do we finish? Number seven in the rankings, although I yeah. personally would have them number eight behind Oregon. You know, we've gone over this before. Um, they just, you know, Ohio State just wasn't all that good this season. The Big Ten sucked, and they feasted off how bad the conference was to hide some serious warts. Um, yeah, I wouldn't pick yeah, Ohio State yeah. against any of the yeah. any of the top eight, you, except you know, maybe. Well, I don't know. Maybe Florida State. Maybe just because I don't. I, I don't know. But then you see Florida State's defense, and it's like, how does Ohio State got to get to twenty one points against that defense? With a with a media, I mean, boy, I mean, after watching this weekend of football, uh, it became really clear Ohio State has a mediocre offensive line not anything better than that it's mediocre they have a good defensive line not a very good or even a great defensive line i don't believe but they have a good defensive line they have very average linebackers um and they have pretty good uh defensive backs and they have a, a, a an average to below average quarterback. And that's just not a formula uh, to be able to win a, a national championship or to be able to even really win playoff games for that matter. I just hope they can beat Missouri. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've gone over backwards and forwards the failures of Ohio State this season. And d don't get me wrong. The season is absolutely a failure. We had a lot of returning players back. I was reading somewhere today, Michael, that we're losing so much off of this year's team that this, you know, I was reading on a message board somewhere and this guy is like a, one of those weird homers, mm -hmm. um, very mentally ill, sick person, by the way, as well. <laughs> um, but he did make a good point. He's like, next season's Ohio state team is going to be not what we're accustomed to when it comes to like the talent spectrum. Mm -hmm. across the board which is wow. if he's you know, again i haven't really looked into next season's roster we still have to finish this recruiting class we have to see the transfer portal all of that but if this fucking stupid homer is telling the truth where are we as a program man do we just need to like just yeah. understand that we're not as good as we think and just be accepting of what ohio state is now which is kind of in that second tier of teams we're not in the elite we're not yes jay um and and unfortunately it's what i've been saying uh since 2021 uh and, and been saying it with many many stones thrown my way uh and it is that ryan day is a slow bleed and the program is moving backwards and it's so slow that it's almost imperceptible many times but when you look up and actually see the ship has drifted quite a ways from the dock and it's like nobody has noticed and, and you look out and we're the number eight number nine team in the country um we're losing the big time defensive linemen I know we still have a good recruiting class, but again, the recruiting classes are never balanced in the areas that you have to have to win. We're still not getting stud offensive linemen. Um, we're struggling to land the top defensive linemen. Uh, we're not even consistently landing really impact type linebackers. No, uh, linebacker position is definitely a disaster. And, and I think it's starting to show. And I think next year's roster is going to be the first year that we really start to see Ryan Day's program. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. If, I don't think that's a good thing either. Um, yeah, I mean, you make a good point. I mean, obviously all those other positions, but, you know, the the 
you know, when I look across college football, uh, you know, over the last couple of days, number one, what sticks out to me is, you know, no other team is playing garbage, slow linebackers like Tommy Eichenberg. Uh, uh, number two, how teams actually call an offense in a big game. Like, look yeah. at what Washington wow. – and Texas wow. and Alabama, or even Oregon. Oregon was Oregon. Pedal, they were pedal to the metal. And Dan this Lan- just goes to Dan- show how far behind Ryan Day is. He's Dan- terrible. Dan Lanning didn't lose in the turtle position. Dan Lanning lost going for the submission and just didn't quite get it. There's a difference, and I'm not saying that Dan Lanning's going to end up being. Uh, a great coach or better than, you know, better than, I, I don't know. That's yet to be determined, but I can tell you this watching him, he's aggressive and he goes after it and he lost by taking his big knockout swings. He didn't lose the way Ryan day loses, which is turtling up, not giving it your best playing it super safe and being absolutely terrified of making mistakes. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, again, uh, I mean, Dan Lenning's a new head coach as well at Oregon, so it's not like he's really won any big games there. But he was absolutely out coached by, you know, Washington specifically comes to mind. Texas next, Alabama third. You know, Oregon called it still a better game than Ohio State did. But man, oh man, it's just these teams let it hang out, reverse passes, and just you know throwing it all over, giving letting your playmakers make a. a uh, play, you know, featuring your players and stuff, all the things Ohio State really didn't do or try and do against Michigan. It's just, it's just, you know, that is the way you're supposed to call a game and a big game. And Ryan Day, that's why he loses. He doesn't call it like that. It's, you know, it's really disgusting. And, you know, he sucks. We've said it, you know, we have, we said it all year. We don't think he's a very good coach. He just has very, very good talent. And that's why he wins because he just out talents people, but he's never going to out scheme anyone. And that those warts rear their ugly head when he gets, you know, against teams uh, with similar talent. And people are trying to say he has a Michigan problem. And I think I said this last week. I don't think he has a Michigan problem, Michael. He just has a, he has a problem beating just teams with comparable talent. You could yeah. insert any of the top, five teams in there instead of Michigan the last three years. And they're going to be a problem. It. Yeah, and he would have lost all three to them too. Mm-hmm. I don't, I just don't think he's a very good coach. I do right. think he tries, like, in his mind, which whatever that is, to, you know, coach as well as he can. But, you know, he does pucker up. He just doesn't have the balls to call, you know, an elite offensive game plan at a big game. He doesn't. And he doesn't mm-hmm. have the cachet to bring in quality assistance either he's hired justin fry he sucks Knowles sucks um the quarterback coach i mean like i guess he's a hangover from urban but you know like at least ryan day was urban's like quarterback and offensive well, coordinator you know, coach. jay i'll pose an alternative theory um you know because i i feel like at a school like ohio state if you can pay the kind of salaries that he's paying that you can at least get some guys with some track record of success because i mean we have the highest paid offensive line coach in the entire nation and justin fry making almost 1.1 million okay so here here's my theory possibly the reason the coaching staff is as poor as it is is because ryan day is just the type of guy he's the type of leader that has to have underlings around him uh parker fleming an underling that came up under. Oh yeah, another there. shitty fucking coach. We we uh, keep forgetting about him. Uh, Keenan Bailey, who he just hired to be the tight ends coach, an underling that came up under him. Corey Dennis, Urban Meyer's son-in-law. As much as I love Urban, it was a nepotism hire. He hired Corey Dennis just because of Urban. He has been Day's underling. Uh, Dennis has never worked for any other head coach besides Ryan Day. Uh, and then you've got Justin Fry who's one of his best friends. And so it may be, he just has to be surrounded at least on his side of the ball with people that are going to let him do whatever he wants and never raise any objection. He has to have yes, men on defense. I don't think he cares because I don't think he has anything to do with that side of the ball anyway. No, he doesn't. I mean, he's, what did he say? Knowles is the head coach of the defense, which right. 
I guess, but I mean, you're the head coach. Shouldn't he still answer to you some? I, I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> I yeah, don't know. absolutely. It's just a fucking disaster in there, man. Um, but, per, you know, moving on to the bowl game, and we'll talk more about the bowl game as the weeks come along. But, you know, from a 10,000 foot perspective, personally, I love the Missouri matchup. Um, this is actually a winnable game for Ryan Day. He would have lost again. I said he would have lost to the other, you know, teams in the top six as well as Oregon, and that would have been probably a 50 50 game. Um, mm-hmm. so who knows there? All right, at least in the top six, he would have all lost. Um, we're just not a top program right now. Ohio State's not like it or hate it, it's the truth. We're not in a position to be competing against the elite teams this season. Thank God we didn't get matched up with any of them because it would have been a loss. It would have just sunk us even further down as a program and, you know, it would have raised which, a lot of questions in the off season. You know, which tells me, I, I don't think Michigan just has a great chance against Alabama because, no. uh, uh, you know, a Michigan's just like a better version of us. Like they don't have that electricity. They don't have their offense really kind of sucks. I mean, yeah, Michigan I mean, fans, I love you guys, but your offense is yeah, no good. I, I, just I mean, because you, get, you scored 30 points against Ohio State's overrated defense does not mean your offense is good. No, I mean, I mean, back during the the uh Lloyd Carr days, like you guys had some quarterbacks with some with some passing attacks. Like, you know, you were dangerous with the pass. Like, what has happened? Like, why can Harbaugh not develop a forward passing game? I mean, if, if his teams could throw for 230 or 40 yards, they would be deadly, but they can't even muster that. And well, think about the personnel football. that Lloyd Carr had versus what Michigan has now. He actually had like, wide receivers, yeah. Well, in, in my opinion, Braylon Edwards is damn near the best college receiver I've ever seen. <laughs> but, like, they had him, they had David Terrell, yeah. Jason Avant. Mar- uh, Mario Manningham. Mario Manningham. Yeah. Uh, Steve Breston, all of those guys are better than anything Michigan has had as at receiver in the last couple of years. Like Michigan it's a used group. to get wide receivers, and like now they get nothing. Who is Ty Streets? Ty Streets is a freaking monster, yeah. absolute athletic freak, one of the most talented receivers I've ever seen, and he had a solid NFL career. Um, and Michigan, fans, it, Michigan guys- hasn't had anything like those receivers, nothing. Michigan fans, you guys need to be like, you know, figuring out why you can't get some wide receivers. Cause if you don't, you know, it doesn't matter how well you do those other things you're going to do. It's going to be really hard to beat the Alabamas of the world. And I think, I think you're going to, uh, unfortunately I'm rooting for you. I am, but I right. think you're going to, I think you're going to find that out probably, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, well, yeah. in the road bowl. Um, yeah, man, it's just, you know, um, they're just not recruiting. I mean, the, the big receiver they've gotten recruiting wise. Mm. Remember Donovan Peoples Jones? Yep. They got him in the 2017 class. He was like their yep. last big fish and he was good, mm-hmm. um, but he just didn't quite pan out. I know he's kind of been okay in the NFL and kind of mm-hmm. found himself in the NFL there, but I don't know, man. It's just, it's, uh, I don't know, man. We'll talk more about that Alabama game as goes on, but I mean, they really don't do what they, you know, they are not built offensively to score really any points against Alabama. Yeah. But, um, back to Ohio state. And I know that I just said that I'm happy with the Missouri matchup and all Mm -hmm. of that. I'm happy to have the opportunity to actually win a bowl game against an sec team, all of that. Don't get it twisted now. While I'm super happy Ohio State is not in the playoffs and not playing a top, you know, and not playing a top seven team, I am absolutely disgusted at the shape this program is in. We should be able to win against any team in the country. And when, in fact, we would have lost to every team in the top six. That is a disgusting state of affairs in Ohio state land. I don't give a fuck what anyone says that is disgusting. We should be in the top three or four and be able to beat anyone. And I should be able to look at Ohio state and be like, Ohio state can win that fucking game today because we have a coach that I believe in and our talent is there to line up and beat anyone. But, but definitely the coaching is not there. The talent is there, but the talent is 
taken down by the lack of development and the lack of confidence the players have in the fucking shitty coaches at Ohio State. They all fucking suck, especially you, Ryan, you stupid motherfucker, <laughs> worthless bitch ass. So Fuck, I'm so pissed off tonight, Michael. So you don't think there's any prayer um, that things begin to turn back the right direction? You think that because th there'd be some that would argue this is just a blip in the radar. This is just an off year. You know, yet, yes, maybe we're the seventh, eighth, ninth best team in the country this year. That's not really where we want to be because like most of the time we're at least in the top six, like for most of the last 20 years, Jay, six has been Ohio state's floor. This is below that. Um, and so, uh, what do you say to those people that just say, well, that's just a blip in the radar and, and, and he's going to get it back on track and we're going to be right back up there in the top two or three because he was so close to winning a national championship against Georgia. He was so close, Jay. How could you say that the program is not where it needs to be? I would just ask those people, what evidence is there that shows that Ryan Day is the right man to lead this ship and he's going to win a national championship? What evidence is there? Show was, me the was, fucking evidence. He was one point away from a national championship last year. Okay, but they still lost. They had a two-touchdown lead, and I, they I'm lost. Just, I'm just telling you what the argument is. I mean, I, I don't know, and I think yeah. those people, I mean, those people obviously don't know sports, not just football, but People that kind of say that stuff don't really pay attention. I don't, I think most people don't actually know how to analyze sports. I think most people didn't play at a high level or played competitively, and that's fine, but don't act like you're the expert on the subject matter at hand either. It's just, well, but, but here's what even a lot of the, uh, those, well, I think that's bad too. I don't know. Those, those that were supposed to listen to, uh, the, the the media the talking heads the uh the ohio state beat writers the ohio the ohio state radio personalities etc they are using a lot of this still oh come on jay i mean you cannot tell me that ryan day is not the man to lead this program yeah we've had some setbacks but the guy is is he's 56 and 7 i mean you cannot fire a guy who's 56 and seven. Well, that's fine. If you just want a guy who's just going to do, I guess, the bare minimum. What do they say in office space? It's like, you know, just doing the bare minimum just so right. you don't get fired or something right. like that. Right. It's kind of right. along the lines of what Ryan Day is doing, because let's be real. The bare minimum at Ohio State now is probably 10 and maybe 11 wins a year based on who you're playing. Right. Uh, let's be real. I understand that's going to change next year with Oregon right. and Washington and you they, they don't have a tough schedule next year for, for all of the new talent that came to the conference. They got it pretty easy. Really? I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, I peaked it. I know it changed like twice. I know mm. we go to Oregon. That's, that's about it. We've got Oregon and we've got Michigan and we've got Penn uh, state. Penn State, and that's it. Yeah, it is kind of like a soft ass fucking schedule, mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. like, uh, I don't know. I, again, like, we don't even know who's going to be on Ohio State's team next year. You really can't start looking at next year at all um, too soon. There, man. Oh man, it's just God. Jay, man. you know, I, I was looking at another team that uh, I was I was uh, reflecting upon Ryan Day, mm -hmm. and this is what Ryan Day inherited. A lot of people will say, you know, oh my gosh, you know, the program was. Uh, you know, tanking under urban. Thank God Ryan day came and saved it. Well, in 2018, which was a weird year because there was the Zach Smith scandal and urban was leaving. And it was just a, it was just a weird year, but uh, that, that team that went 13 and one, uh, they beat number 15. Yeah. Talk, think about Alabama getting uh, in this year, this team, the urban's last year 2018 they beat mm -hmm. number 15 number 9 number 24 number 4 and number 21 and they got left out of the college football playoffs as a 12 and 1 big 10 champ that's pretty incredible isn't it oh yeah they're talking about the 2018 team yeah no oh, yeah well you got you lost 49 to 20 to purdue right i get it i'm just that's saying why. like 
I'm just saying like that they really got punished for that loss because they beat 15, 9, 24, 4, and 21. Uh, they had one, two, three, four, five wins against top 25 opponents. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, you would think that that, that would trump one bad loss, but uh, in that case, it did not. Man, if I remember 2018 correctly, um, point, be, point being Ryan Day inherited a program in very good shape. Yeah, no, no, he absolutely did. No, he absolutely did. Um, 2018 team, I don't know if they got really screwed over or anything because they weren't, they didn't play very well against Northwestern, if you don't, you know, in that Big Ten championship game. Mm hmm. But no, um, you're absolutely right. Ryan Day and what he has inherited is not the same as what Kirby Smart did or some other kids. Like no. he did inherit a program that was, you know, maybe not quite firing on all cylinders, but it was definitely firing and doing very well. Um, he really hasn't elevated it much since then. I think the offense has gotten a little better, but he's. He just doesn't win the big games, man. He doesn't. Jay, we can say safely it was firing at a significantly higher level than what either of his two predecessors inherited because uh, Jim Trestle yes. inherited uh, John Cooper's program that was going seven and six, eight and four, and had become a total undisciplined mess. Uh, and then, of course, when Tress left, there was an exodus of, of some of the, the elite talent and uh, with you know prior and and all of those guys and then there was the intervening fickle year where things really went to pot six and seven um and that's what meyer inherited uh day didn't inherit anything like the two of those guys did um day inherited a team that was 13 and one, mm -hmm. you, know? Yeah, no, <laughs> you know, a program that had been recruiting uh pretty much in the top five in every class that he was getting uh, and many times in the top two, I think he had two, two or three number two classes that he inherited. So he inherited a very good situation despite urban shortcomings. And, uh, you know, through five years, uh, you, the bare minimum has been done with that. And now it's his program. And now we're starting to see a fall off. He made this bed time for him to lie in it. Mm -hmm. I, that's all I can really add to that. Um, you're absolutely correct. Um, did you happen to see the Big Ten bowl matchups? This, you know, that's coming out. You know, like I understand we just talked about Ohio State and Michigan, but did you happen to see what the rest of the conference is up against? No, I haven't taken a look at that yet. Okay, everyone. Just so you know, we actually are smart Ohio State fans, and I know like the ten percent of you that probably agree with us. You know fully agree with us but you know we cheer for the rest of the big 10 including you michigan you yep. know when you play in all of these games but i swear man if there is ever like a big 10 sec challenge in the postseason we got it like i swear there are like five big 10 versus uh sec matchups Give right, me the moment. Sure. yeah hold on let's run it down real quick because this is this is actually pretty interesting so uh da, 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 da. let's see here big 10 bowl matchups i know like off the top of my head we have ohio state and missouri we already went over that right mm -hmm. we went over michigan versus alabama mm -hmm. um let's see here da, 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 da. um northwestern no uh right no um penn state and Ole miss all miss yes yep. penn state and Ole miss Okay. And you have Mar finally Maryland. Maryland is a team in the Big Ten that actually has some athletes and can match the SEC. Who you know, for the most part, depending on who it is, they can actually match like a mid-tier SEC team with athletes. They have Auburn. That's a actually a very exciting matchup there. Uh, Penn uh, State Ole Miss will be an interesting matchup. I'm excited. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. Penn State Ole Miss, Maryland, Auburn. Uh, you have Iowa playing. Uh, who who the fuck is Iowa playing? They're playing Tennessee. Wow. You're all neck of the woods, man. If Iowa doesn't beat Tennessee, I was dog crap. Now, here's a game that could get really, really, really disgusting and be like, you know, somebody could be charged with murder here. Um, LSU is playing Wisconsin. <laughs> well, uh, the, uh, oh, the, you know, their quarterbacks back. Oh, my gosh. That's going to be, that's going to be, 52 to 
seven, yeah, I, 17 maybe. I mean, you know, uh, LSU's defense is bad, so they might get 14 to 17 on them, but that's going to be an ugly, ugly game. Yeah, no, I mean, again, I'm going to be full on cheering for Wisconsin, and they are going to have to slow the game down and uh, be able to run the ball and if they can. And I know they've been trying to play more spread. This is not the is, game to is play. Is their running back back, or was he no, out for the year? No, he's back. Which one? Chez Malusi is still, like, he's out for the year. No, they're 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 the best one. What's his name? He got hurt the Ohio State game. Oh, damn. Uh, what the hell is his name? Hold on, give me a moment. I'll be able to find it for you. Uh, I know exactly who you're talking about. He's back. Yeah, no, he's he back. is absolutely back. He's right. back. Um, man, man, why is his name escaping me? Again, this is not a Big Ten podcast, people. We well, they're gonna, for the Big Ten, but they're gonna, we, have we're not, to, they're gonna have to run the Braylon ball. Allen, Braylon Allen. Braylon Allen. Now Allen, it just yeah. came to my mind. What the fuck? Yeah, they're gonna have to run the ball with him. That's for sure. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. Now LSU's defense sucks, but it sucks against like SEC offenses that are able to spread the ball out and stuff. Right. But you know, that's six Big Ten SEC matchups there, Michael. Six of them. Uh, three and three would be that. That would be ideal. I, I can't see any better than that. We're gonna do an episode later on. Now that, and now again, we love you guys. We love the Big Ten. This is you know, it's Ohio State podcast first, but it's a Big Ten podcast second. So. We are going to go over all of the Big Ten matchups in an episode um, yep. here in the next, like, you know, couple weeks. I think that's something that we probably yep. need to do because we love the Big Ten, man. And the Big Ten Network just doesn't, you know, the Big Ten Network is too, they handle the kids' gloves. Probably even less so than that. You know, they don't it, call it, it like it is. It, no, the Big Ten Network, like, the only time you watch that is to watch the game. And then as soon as the game's over, you turn it off because there's there's almost nothing good that I hear out of the Big Ten Network, Jay. I mean, maybe maybe I need to give it a chance again, but I quit listening to any of their guys because they just never offered anything. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I like Howard Griffin. Okay, and not familiar he's with about him. he's the young, what? I'm not familiar with him. Oh man, he. Uh... He's probably the only guy on there that I like. Gary Donardo is a dumbass. Um, Jake Butts on there. Jake Butt, I like. He's not too bad. I like him. Actually, mm -hmm. no, I do like Jake Butt. Yeah, that's a good. Uh, so you do. So you must watch the Big Ten Network. You know, probably more than I do. A, I, I just a little bit here, here and there. Breaking news: Jair Brown just entered the transfer portal. Backup DB. Mm. That sucks, man. Brian Turner entered the transfer portal. Um, I, that was the guy that I met at Buford high school a couple seasons ago. Got my picture with him. Yeah. Um, his dad was the coolest dude in the world. Let me tell you. Pryor, uh, also answered, uh, entered the portal. Yeah. Evan Pryor mm -hmm. into the transfer portal. Another mm -hmm. kid I feel bad for a local kid yeah. around here. Huff high school. Uh, he'll probably go to North Carolina. Yeah. He'll probably go to North Carolina. I don't see him going to UNC Charlotte. He's better than that. I yeah. assume he'll go and try and play at North Carolina. Legend Cavazos tried to play at North Carolina, and I tried to tell them. I'm like, listen, guys, Legend Cavazos is fucking terrible. If he's, like, playing for you, like, that's a massive problem. And yeah. eventually he got benched there, too. He never made it with them either. Huh. Yeah. Um, well, Jay, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm out of it uh, for tonight. You got anything else to add? Other than the fact that I'm just really sad and pissed off for Florida State Nation, man, no, I don't really have uh, much else to add. I and, mean, you know, we're going to be able to talk more about, you know, Ohio State, Missouri in the next couple of weeks. We're excited for it. But and the you, game as, counts. As you, as you said, Jay, uh, other Big Ten fans, if you're just kind of watching this, be looking. We're going to be doing breakdowns of all of the Big Ten SEC matchups, all six of them. So if you're if your team is one of them, tune in and uh, see what we have to say about them and what we think your chances are against the mighty conference down south, the SEC. And just want to let everyone know, I know that there is a perception out there that these games are meaningless. Let no. me refresh your fucking minds. This game is not a scrimmage. It's not an exhibition before the season. It's not the preseason like they have in the NFL where the games don't count and everybody gets to play. This is a game that counts and goes in the win-loss column. So stop calling these games 
meaningless. They are the farthest things from fucking meaningless. This is a game against a team you have not seen in 25 fucking years. It, it, it absolutely counts. They are Under from the SEC yes. as well. Yes. Jay. We think that Missouri would be a massive black eye to this university, to the Big Ten, and the perception of our conference, which is barely holding on by a thread right now. Jay, this Buckeye team needs an infusion of uh, a Pete Rose mentality. And as we're kind of closing out, I'm going to tell, I'm, I'm tell you a little story about Pete Rose. And I think that you'll agree that it's exactly this is what the Ohio State teams have been missing the last few years. Mm -hmm. In 1970, the All-Star Game was here in Cincinnati. And as you know, as most of our listeners know, the All-Star Game means nothing. It's an exhibition game. And in the end of the game, Pete Rose's friend, Ray Fossey, was the catcher. And they had eaten dinner the night before. But Fossey was on the American League and Rose was on the National League. And there was a hit and Rose is rounding third. Fossey gets out and blocks the plate and Pete Rose runs over him in an exhibition game and separates Ray Fossey's shoulder. Mm. When asked later that year, if it made him feel bad that he separated his friend's shoulder, Pete Rose responded, no, it was a baseball game. It was the national league versus the American league. We were playing to show who was superior. I'd run over my grandmother to score a run. <laughs> and that type of hard-nosed, punch-in-the-mouth mentality is what Ohio State football program needs a fresh infusion of. And I don't know where it could come from, but I know this, Jay. I hope it comes from somewhere. I agree, Michael, man. Dude, I turned 36 years of life this past week, and I really should not be getting this upset about this stupid shit. But all Ohio State has done is just drag me down with their <laughs> just inept athletic department and stuff and underachieving programs. It's like, man, just show that, you know, show that you fucking care, man. Like, you know, get the right coaches in there, this, that, and the other. It's just... Man, oh man, just a lot of problems with the football program and you know yeah. the baseball program. I mean, we just you just mentioned baseball, great story, man. We're going to talk about the Ohio State baseball program here in a couple months. That is the worst program, like in the athletic department, that actually could make some money. So yep. I don't know. So yeah, again, everybody, uh, um, thank you again for listening. Thank you uh, again. I'll recap. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell on there. We'll be back. Um, we might have it like two episodes this week again. I doubt it, but, um, we'll be bringing the content. Don't you worry. Stay tuned. Thank you guys for listening. See you next week.